Hello and welcome to welcome. Bruce and Ed live from New York. I'm Ed. It's, and I'm Bruce. I almost forgot. Uh, it's a gorgeous day in New York again. Oh my God, I love this time of year. I wish I could just Great turn the camera weather. around. Pretty soon we're, we're installing this new um, fancy, um, what's it called? TriCaster software system and we're going to have like all seven cameras. It's going to be so cool. We'll be able to tra transition scenes and stuff and you'll be able to see what we see. This beautiful view of the river and the, the sailboats and everything. It's a gorgeous day. But anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. And today with us, you may have already noticed, uh, Sashin Malhan. Did I pronounce it right? Kind of. Close. Better than, <laughs> better than most. <laughs> He's one of the co-founders of, of a, um, an amazing movement uh, website around a movement, or movement around a website, called InclusivePlanet.com. So welcome. Thank you. Well, um, <laughs> all the way from for, India. All the way from India. Absolutely. Thanks for coming by yeah, our studio. Yeah. You came all the way from India just and to sit here with us. And I can't fix your computers. You can't <laughs> fix them? <laughs> you can't? <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't get me started. Yeah. One time I called Microsoft, okay? And I probably talked to somebody in your town. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, because what city are you from again? I'm from yeah. Bangalore. I, well, I'm not sure it was Bangalore. The where, good where are all the car centers? Bangalore. Yeah, Bangalore. That, that's what I thought. Yeah. Well, I called Microsoft. You've yeah. heard of this company. Well, <laughs> I called Microsoft for tech support, which you know don't even bother. And uh, but when, but I know that I waited on hold for 45 minutes and I got through. And this very nice gentleman said, you know, I told him the problem and he said, um, okay, yes, sir, thank you, sir, thank you very much, sir. So so polite. Could you please spell this word Windows? And I'm like. <laughs> Windows, <laughs> Microsoft Windows. Is this Microsoft? Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. But could you please spell this word Windows? And I'm like, oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> but he said know. thank you. He said thank you very Several much. Several times. Several times. Very polite. Come but on. he didn't know the word you, Windows. You don't know what to appreciate. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Exactly. Oh, Come I appreciate on, him very Always much. Always get the good yeah, first. Yeah. It's but Microsoft I didn't appreciate. Yeah. that They didn't train these people. They don't even know the name Windows. But what, anyway. what you didn't notice was he nodded as well. Oh, I'm and sure. And of course, you were talking to him on the phone. Oh, but you, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't hold it against him. Not at all. It's, it's the company it's that Bill. doesn't train the people. <laughs> but anyway, it's not his They're fault. Doing Blame their it on best. Bill. Blame it on Bill. They are doing their best. I know. Yeah. They're doing their best. It's the company. It's the American company that just didn't train the people. <laughs> It really I is. I like that. It's so mm. sad. But anyway, uh, but no, they're very, very polite and wonderful, mm. and they do their absolute darn. <laughs> Considering the circumstances, mm. you know, we would just walk off the job. I mean, you know, we, we, we won't even do the job. Mm. That's why, you know, we're sending our calls there. Mm. But uh, they're doing a fantastic job. So tell us about Inclusive Planet. Well, well the first, I wanted to ask him, are you, is this your first time in New York? Nope, it's my uh, second time in New York. Hi, and how is it? I know you've been here for yep. 20 days or so. I've uh, been in New York for uh, six days, but before that I was in the Bay Area for some time. Mm -hmm. yeah. In San Francisco? In San Francisco. So yeah. you're partly working? And yeah, so uh, this trip was all about work. The last mm -hmm. time speak I came here... Speak into yeah, the this trip was all about work. The last time I came here, it was just, just exploring the place and discovering it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So, so this is... Wow, so how do you, what do you think of New York? How does it compare to India? <laughs> that's, so, a, that's a loaded, loaded question. question. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> we always start off with a loaded question. So, like yeah, Jonathan. Anyway, you know, what do ahead. I think of New York? <laughs> New York's uh, a great place because you you got a bunch of different people and uh, different cultures. You feel that everywhere, you know. And uh, um, I guess some people find it rude, but uh, you know, I'm okay. I come from a place where you always have a billion people clustering around you and pushing you around. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, so you know, that doesn't sort of. Uh, freak me out a lot mm -hmm. but I, I think New York's a great place but I don't know if I can compare it with India because mm -hmm. India is so fundamentally different in experience compared to anything else mm -hmm. and I'm not saying it's great or I'm, I'm not using adjectives but it's just bizarre in many ways <laughs> so, so it's very hard to uh, you know compare India to anything uh, it's like two different planets right yeah. two different worlds yeah and one is a freakishly bizarre world <laughs> <laughs> well New York isn't New that York, freakishly yeah. bizarre <laughs> Well, it can be at night, <laughs> but <laughs> times, come out at night. Times Square on yeah, the weekend, I'm sure, I'm uh, sure. or driving yeah. on the weekend. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, that's that's cool. Yeah. I, we've never been to India yet, but we we have some you guys are invited. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you. We can't wait to go. We've got we some great friends go. who live there, and uh, but anyway, so one of these days we'll get there. I used to live in Taipei, Taiwan, so I know about the culture shock of a completely different culture. Mm -hmm. It's it, it really is. Right. I always told my American friends, I said it's like getting on a jet and flying to another planet. A different planet where they've been they know about us we don't know anything about them they we think we do but we don't know anything about them <laughs> mm -hmm. and the reality they know a little bit about us because they've been getting our TV signals and our movies right. so they know a little bit about us we know nothing about them <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like it really is a shock that's yeah. why they call it culture yeah. shock it's like, it's like aliens on a different planet you're like oh my god they do everything different they are everything about them is different what they believe and think and yeah yeah it's because shocking. i mean indians can feel like aliens within india so you know for <laughs> foreigners to come to india and experience india can be quite quite an experience you know because mm -hmm. there's just so many different cultures and subcultures and languages and and religions how it comes together is just you know, f mystery <laughs> in many well, ways. In the history, like you said, it's an ancient civilization, ancient, yeah. one of the yeah. oldest in the world. Mm -hmm. And the the, uh, the interesting thing to me is that um, I forgot what I was going to say. I totally <laughs> lost my train of thought. <laughs> too but many interesting, interesting things thing, in your head, Bruce. Just I too know, many interesting things going, bouncing mm -hmm. around. You know, prioritizing the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I'm sorry. I remember uh, because we were what we were talking about off camera before we started was about how generationally, you know, the history, the history of generations always affects the current generations in every culture yeah, and, yeah. and uh, over having overcome so many things, there's these new young generations of Indians yeah. are, are striving and thriving to succeed right. in the world and they are. Yeah, and you know, another thing about yeah. you know, Americans' perceptions here in the US um, of Indians and also of, of uh, Asian countries yeah, and so forth yeah. is we think they're so brilliant. They're, they're right. the smartest geniuses, right. and because it's distorted, because only the the best and brightest Absolutely. come over here, yeah. and the the best and brightest and richest yeah. get to come over here to go to college. Yeah. And yeah. so the ones we meet are brilliant right. scholars, right? Right. 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 Yeah. Of course, there's yeah. only a couple billion others yeah. back home, <laughs> and, and many not so brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, yeah. I didn't say that. I didn't say that but. for the record. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just a normal country. We have a mix of good yeah. people, smart yeah. people, not so uh, smart yeah. people, and uh, but it's diverse, and that that's what makes it special. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Can't wait to visit now. Mm -hmm. now I'm excited. Mm -hmm. We gotta go. So, all right. So now, 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 can we? Right. I want to ask you, yeah. how did this whole concept of inclusive planet come about? Right. And, and what is it? Start well, with what it is. Let me give you an idea of what it is. Yeah. Um, so, inclusive planet. You know. Um, I, the, the, actually, the best way to explain it is to describe the problem, and then in what inclusive planet is becomes kind of apparent when you uh, understand the problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, the community we deal with is is what can be called the print impaired community, and this is people who can't read. Uh, so you can't you can't read letters and you can't read off paper also, or whether it's on screen. So they could be. Um Illiterate, they can't they read. Could, yeah, so that's that's a great question. I'll tell you why. The immediate reaction is okay, so you're blind mm -hmm. if you can't read. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the blind. It's also people who have say severe dyslexia. Mm -hmm. They can't read because they can't make sense of. They can see, but they can't make sense of the letters and, mm -hmm. and the figures. Or it could be people who have a physical disability that prevents them from concentrating on what has to be read mm -hmm. because you have to look in one place to read. Right. Or it could be people who are illiterate, people who can comprehend uh, what they're hearing but cannot read, uh, you know, because... They just haven't learned to read. Yeah. Um, and the thing is that... As well as obviously the visually impaired. Absolutely. So if you look mm -hmm. at these multiple categories, the visually impaired, uh, severely dyslexic, physically disabled from reading, and like you mentioned, people who are illiterate, they are really under one super category called the print impaired. Mm -hmm. And what unifies them is that they need to consume content by hearing mm -hmm. rather than by seeing. Print impaired. Yeah, print impaired. Print mm -hmm. impaired. Pretty simple once you yeah. get it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so they need to consume content by hearing. But that doesn't mean that they need to get content that's human voice. It's not as if they need to hear human voice. It could be something that's a simple text document. Uh, and that could be converted to speech because there are software today that simply convert a text document into speech. Right. What's called text-to-speech software. Right. And you have it on, most computers have yeah. a basic version of it. Right. So as long as the, the content is in those formats, 
it's accessible to these people because right. it can be converted by uh, the software into speech. Of course, human voice is a luxury. If you have something in human voice, it's wow, all of us, all of us mm. like it, right? Regardless yeah, of the sure. print or print. It takes no hardly any brain activity to, to <coughs> comprehend. Just, yeah, just to enjoy and it. And it's much more pleasant than and the robotic voice. Absolutely. <laughs> Even the best robotic voices yeah, yeah, can't compare to my no voice. Mm. <laughs> 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 but, uh, so, you know, now... So that you've understood what accessible means, accessible content. The problem is there's not much accessible content in the world. Mm -hmm. In places like the US, there's much more because there's government effort. So maybe the percentage is supposed to be somewhere in the region of 5 to 6% of all content is mm -hmm. accessible. Mm -hmm. That means 1 20th of you, what you and I uh, get is accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but in other countries, it could be as low as 1% or even lower than 1%. How do you wow. define accessible then? Are you saying, like if it's just text, is yeah. that considered accessible? Yes, yeah, yeah. So oh. digital content is, of course, much more accessible than books and magazines because that's per se inaccessible. Right? Right. You have to look at that. Digital mm -hmm. content is more accessible mm -hmm. as long as it's not in image format, as long as it's in an open text format. Right. And as long as it's findable. You know, mm. it's like saying it's great to have a, a digital content which is accessible, but it needs to be on a site that the a, a um, person connect. uses. Yeah, that, that a simple site that can take a person there because the same person who's having a problem with content is also going to have a problem on that site. There should be a Google for the visually impaired. There Google, is a Google. That, that links directly to the text of it. Ah. Instead of the whole fancy layout. Well, you know, you should have been in Google because the truth, <laughs> the truth of the matter is that there is a search that helps you find more accessible things. It's called the Google Accessible Search. But, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> it was my idea, like yeah. Windows 7. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Windows 7 was not my idea. Don't blame me. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> is Microsoft one of the sponsors of the no. show? No. Mm, definitely, probably <laughs> never will be at this point. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Bill. But uh, so that's, so, you know, uh, so coming back to the issue of accessible content. Now, the question becomes, how do you, if content, if there's so few content, how do you make content available to these people? The way the world has been dealing with the problem is by going to publishers and, you know, kind of reaching out to them and saying, can you guys put more content in accessible formats? Mm -hmm. but that is one way. That is going to take time. Publishers need to come around to the idea. We believe, uh, and this brings us back to what we, what is our core belief. Our core belief, uh, and I'm sure this belief is shared across the world by many, many people who are print impaired, is that uh, there is tremendous promise in print impaired people connecting with other print impaired people mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. um, because of two things. One, when they form a community, this community can do a bunch of things. One, of course, just the joy of forming a community because... Mm -hmm very often print impaired people don't end up socializing in the same way, especially blind people, don't mm -hmm. end up socializing in the same way as the sighted people do. The real offline world can be quite inaccessible. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so connecting with each other is a joy by itself. Yeah. But after you connect with each other, there are some phenomenal things that can come out of that, which is that you can, each, each print impaired person, aside from being, uh, you know, ash, ash, because of the fact that they have the experience of uh, either dyslexia or blindness, are also incredible problem solvers. I mean, think about it. You have to be, right? Mm -hmm. Your entire life experience is problem solving. They right? get their exercise of their brain. Yeah, all the time. Because right. you have to figure, you can't use this tool because it's not designed for you. So how do you get to use it? Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to do this particular activity, but it's tough for you. So what is the best way to get to this activity? And then many, I don't know what percentage, but many, if not most, will just not even use a computer. I've met blind people who just say, oh no, I won't even try a computer. Yeah, I've never yeah, tried. Yeah, it's a, it's because, good. especially if they're older generation. Oh, yeah. even, even you know, um, sighted people yeah. <laughs> who are in their 60s, many are like, no, computers, <laughs> no, they're phobic. <laughs> but you know, incredibly, when they start using it, it's almost addictive because the digital world mm -hmm. is much more accessible because yeah. it's text-to-speech convertible than yeah. the offline world. Right. You know, I mean, so if offline world, you see an advertisement, it's not text-to-speech convertible, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so coming back to that, each blind, per each print impaired person, not just the blind, are problem solvers. And one of the areas where they really solve problems is in terms of content. When they need a book or a, or, or any or a magazine or anything else, they somebody helps them convert it into accessible formats. Mm -hmm. So whether it's father, mother, friends, or them they themselves by finding it. Mm -hmm. So over a period of time, they aggregate a bunch of solutions. 
and that includes accessible content. Now, if you were to, this, this is so it's a bit of a treasure box, right? It's and they like can a treasure share chest. it with now, a you, social network. Exactly. Now, if yeah. you are able to allow this treasure uh, treasure box, <coughs> which contains not just content but also solutions to problems and information, mm -hmm. personal experiences and relationships right. and work challenges, right. and you can somehow unlock it in an intelligent manner across the world, mm -hmm. then people are going to be just people are going to be sh not just aggregating useful content which they can find intelligently because they can just run a search for a person who's in a similar position to them mm -hmm. and then actually find content that's useful to them. Right, but right. they can also <coughs> share information that's vital. So it's a bit like uh, unlocking these treasure boxes and creating a much larger <laughs> larger treasure box. It's with, a window you know, into a whole new world, right? right. Absolutely. And that's they don't awesome. even probably don't realize it until they're in there and then now they're tapped into people that love to go skiing or whatever, you know. And they can <laughs> share that with them. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, where do, so I There think is a way to do what you want to do. I heard about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they can connect the people. Yeah. You know what, by the way, just a little sidebar. Uh, one uh, technology that I think has proven super, super powerful for the visually, the sight impaired, reading, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. print impaired sure. is uh, Twitter. Absolutely. Because I, I'm big on Twitter. And I have a, 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 I've made a lot of connections with. Well, that's how we connected yeah, too. Yeah. I've made a lot of connections of visually impaired people because I'm, uh, my work in Ubuntu Linux and mm -hmm. bread tech and mm -hmm. enterprise and thing on the side, where I, I wanted my I was I determined that I wanted to make it accessible. Mm -hmm. It was my one friend Dave, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I want I want every bread tech computer to be 100% accessible. You just push one button and it, it, it speaks to you, yeah. right out of the box. And so I kind of used him as a consultant to, to help me do that. And through our conversations, he's connected me to all these other people on Twitter. And Twitter, obviously, is an excellent tool because it it's a little tiny uh, tweet, a little 140 and, and characters. The Twitter text. interface is also extremely accessible. In fact, there is an accessible <coughs> version of the Twitter interface called Accessible Twitter. Uh -huh. So it's not just the fact that Twitter, the tweets themselves are phenomenally small and easy to digest. Right. It's also the interface which is easy for the... For, for blind people to use mm -hmm. because they're using the text to speech software on that interface, on right? Perfect. So, uh, it's the uh, to, to best example would be it's not just the city that's great, the road to the city is also great. Right? Okay, so, got you. So, I think, right. but then once you get there, the destination can be like the links, then yeah. it's a yeah, whole other yeah, world because yeah, then yeah. now you're and back it, out on the internet. It's, um, it seems more attractive because there's less words, so in like easier to I digest, would think, like, if, comprehend. yeah, right, like if I was pr uh, print impaired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be very alluring to mm -hmm. me because mm -hmm. you know I only have to read a few words and then I hopefully well, that can makes get me. You know, it's a damn interesting one because I, I'm not so <coughs> sure whether that's the case. Uh, one would think that, so I'm glad that you asked this question because I know a lot of people come up and say, "Is that the case?" But you know, print impaired people consume by hearing much faster. If you ever hear a print impaired person. Uh, uh, listening to uh, the text to speech, they listen about six to ten times faster. So the sounds you can't even hear the sound; it's so fast they because they oh, do, 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 do. do they play it in fast motion? So they play it fast, fast, fast reading, fast oh reading, God. because they because the hearing becomes much more enhanced. Wow! You know, one of the peop one of the things uh, uh, the problem with us is we have we have. We are hugely biased towards our own perspectives. So right. when we see, we, That's we true of everything for us in the life. world is yeah. for us the world is visual world. But the auditory world, uh, you know, and what is the joys of the what are the joys of the auditory world is a far un, sort of unexplored sort of area, um, and people are doing some pretty interesting work in that. So, so all, you know, I feel that there's something to be gained from a community that has such sophisticated comprehension of the auditory world. Yeah. So, uh, so that's why we inclusive planet is not is inclusive planet, not exclusive planet. It's not just <laughs> for the it's not just for the uh, print impaired. Ultimately, we want the community to be built and then to start sharing useful experiences and, and content which can be u entertaining even for sighted people. I for instance, an auditory I description. Yeah. <laughs> an auditory I got welcome. Care. I got tons of welcome messages. Everybody wants to be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, welcome, welcome. I'm like, you don't even know me. How do you know you want to be my friend? <laughs> you will. You will. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. It's yeah, so the friendliest yeah. site I've ever joined. It's really friendly. And, and we hope that, you know, Monday, if you have a uh, person who's blind describing his experience of a musical concert. Mm -hmm. you know, how's that? You know, um, his experience of walking down a street in New York and what does that what does that mean in terms of the content? Sounds. Just imagine how interesting yeah. that would be. Why well, just wow. uh, out of my first thought after you saying that would be wow, I can really learn how to listen mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. acutely. 
absolutely. From someone that is yeah. so experienced yeah. at that, yeah. I can I can see where that I can get some lessons from that. Exactly, the that's that the long term vision. The vision mm-hmm. is that one day, uh, when as this community builds and builds and builds across the world, it's it's going to be inclusive planet. It's going to bridge back into the sighted world, and and you're going to find con- content being created which is not just useful for. Uh, print impaired people but content is phenomenally attractive for sighted people so we feel that the if we can get the community going that's where the challenge lies that's fine because once the community gets together there's going to be great stuff happening mm-hmm. but getting the community mm-hmm. going is the challenge of the next few months is, so mm-hmm. how, well, how long has this existed seven months now oh that's oh. it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh well I don't think it's going to take long because well through the power of Twitter yeah. every people are connecting um, just the, one of the most beautiful things about Twitter, back, not to get back on that again, but I use, when I search for something, if I'm interested in a topic, I search Google, like everyone, but I search Twitter too. I go to search.twitter.com and you search for the same term and you get a uh, wealth of information. They're different because obviously Google is giving you web pages and news articles, blogs, things that people have put time into creating. But Twitter is like now, thoughts, right now. I bought it, it didn't work, whatever, you know, yeah. like boom, boom, boom. And then I can actually talk to those people. Right. I can send a reply and say, why didn't it work? What are you doing? Right. Da, 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 da. And right. I go, okay, well, this person doesn't know what they're talking about. Or this person <laughs> is a genius. Right. He developed the software, right. you know, right. he's right. like the right. developer. Yeah. So you can really connect. And so how that ties in is that the accessible community yeah. is obviously on Twitter, like yeah. you said. Yeah. So they can talk about Inclusive sure. Planet. Sure. They can tweet about Inclusive sure. Planet. Yeah. And Boom, Every, it's got to be exploding, the membership. So, you know, the challenges are this, which is currently we're at about 4,000 users from 75 countries. Mm-hmm. But, you know... Uh, Seven I, months, it, that's good. Yeah, but the, I think there are certain challenges, you know, so it's a, we, we, we have a fairly realistic, you know, view of what the challenges are. And the challenges are that, um, you know, we're a small team and uh, the number of uh, print impaired people who are really lean, lean just a little sorry bit. <laughs> we're, we're a small <laughs> team and, and the number of print impaired people who are um, you know on using networks like this is not so much so mm. if if we want this to really succeed we want this to penetrate to a wider audience of people we're looking at uh, reaching out to millions and not to a few thousands right. so I think uh, we will have to look at how to build those networks in different countries and working with people in that process, getting all types of support, looking at what kind of content would be attractive to people. Uh, because if you look at the challenge now, if it's a, if, if, since it's a community-driven site, in the early phases, when so, a user comes, he's not going to get much if there's very few users. Because right. he's not going to find other users similar to him, That's find much. content which people have shared, which is interesting. Yeah. So you need to seed and put content out there. So mm-hmm. right now we're on the lookout for, I think two things, and this is also a call to everybody who's listening in, we're on the lookout for people to ha- partner with us and provide interesting content on the platform, mm-hmm. which can be the seed, attract, the seed honey to mm-hmm. attract people uh, to come and use the site even before there are that many users. Mm-hmm. And we're also looking for ways in which to spread the word amongst the print impaired community. And we're looking for ideas and collaborators. I think, Bruce, you, you said something very important uh, in the beginning. You said this movement. You used the word movement. Inclusive Planet is not an idea coming out of a particular place which is then being pushed across. It is an idea. It's an open idea which is evolving. The, notion, the, uh, the, the core of the idea is to build a wide global community of print-impaired people. And everyone's welcome to join as a co-founder, as a member of that idea, as a progenitor of the idea. There is no proprietary attitude to this. Mm. The idea is to it's build a, a vast thing. global network. And so anyone who feels that there is a synergy, that they believe in this, can come in um, and collaborate and contribute and build this. I have network. an idea to yeah. contribute. <coughs> the, we, we've, you we've already created, are. Yeah, well, uh, but I have another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too smart. I can have more than one, right? Can I? So, no, Ed and I have created social networks for uh, special interest groups before. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, actually, Ed came up with is, um, I think it would work very well in this. You you know, the, the people who are uh, print impaired, who are already into technology, they already are visiting websites, they're already reaching accessible information. Those people are easy to reach because through Twitter and through all the other communication mechanisms mm-hmm. like like this, this mm-hmm. broadcast, mm-hmm. Um, they are finding out about Inclusive Planet. They're going there. They're discovering it on their own because mm-hmm. they're tech savvy. Mm-hmm. But there's probably 
uh, maybe even a majority mm -hmm. of print impaired people who are not so tech savvy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's who you want to reach, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one of the ways, well, I think one of the w best ways might be through institutions like uh, schools for the blind, mm -hmm. institutions. Mm -hmm. um, there are, um, I know in, in New York City, there are um, organizations that are specifically oh, for the blind and things. And those people, even the directors and the administration are mm -hmm. not so tech savvy. Mm -hmm. So reaching them is critical. Right. So reaching out to them. Right. And there, I can suggest several ways. One way, any of you can who are watching could do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, contact Sashin and, and inclusiveplanet.com. And if, you're, if you have time and you're willing to do this, what you can do is uh, get your hands on a list of such organizations, which yeah. I'm sure yeah. You, yeah. you guys have this, um, a list of, you know, all the 10,000 organizations mm -hmm. in just in this country, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. you've got it in your country too. Mm -hmm. And then reach out, find their email address, mm -hmm. find their phone number. Don't right. be afraid to call them on the phone and say, look, there's this thing, Inclusive Planet. Yeah. We want to, you to um, teach people, yeah. uh, teach your clientele mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. patrons or whatever mm -hmm. they're called you know mm -hmm. people um, about how to use it mm -hmm. and we'd be happy to come in and show you how to do sure. it sure. Mm -hmm. and so like if you can volunteer to uh, reach out by email reach out by phone right. to all right. these organizations right. and institutions and to actually if you're able to right. if you have the ability right. to go there and and like even do a, a workshop or right. what would you call it like an orientation to teach the staff sure. how to teach the people how to use it Bruce, mm -hmm. you're a genius. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I had a suspicious, I had to keep beating you up, but you've proven it. But that's the thing. I think that's a, that's a oh, huge key. Yeah, is that, uh, so. There's a huge percentage so. that are not tech savvy. I think so. And, you know, uh, I, I, absolutely. And, and what happens is if you look at the idea of social networking, you have uh, the social networks that exist to today are a little too sophisticated and a little too complicated. We take we take them for granted because we have the benefit of being able to see uh, all the multiple features they provide and all the elements, but they're not that accessible. And uh, even for the even for sighted people, yeah. um, you know, most of my friends are like Twitter. I don't. It's so simple to me. It's like as simple as a doorbell yeah. Yeah. thing, yeah. you know. But but for many many yeah. people, they're like, oh, I don't understand it. I don't get it. But Twitter's and these are great. sighted people. Yeah. But Twitter's great. I mean, look it's at simple. Facebook and a bunch. Of, they are even um, more complicated. Oh, yeah. Right? I don't and, understand and it. Inclusive, <laughs> inclusive Planet offers the opportunity of having a very simple designed for the print impaired mm -hmm. social network so you, and, and which we can in the long run bridge to Facebook and, and bridge to right. so we can offer you totally. know an access route, right? Bridges, uh, so we, tunnels, we, we believe, connections. I mean, my message to people is just visualize the power of of, of print impaired people coming together and the multiple things that will happen there not yeah. just the socialization but the sharing of information and content I mean you know I, I don't think one needs to articulate that vision uh, uh, in great detail because it's quite, it's pretty obvious oh, the yeah. power of community oh, yeah. that is there mm -hmm. so yeah. but, but th uh, thanks Bruce I'm going to do that and again like a call to everyone saying if you can if you want to join in this idea and, and, and want to help us build this in some way how do they reach you? What's the best uh, email? The best, I guess you can mail me at uh, Sachin Malhan, S-A-C-H-I-N dot Malhan, M-A-L-H-A-N, at mm -hmm. inclusiveplanet.com. Okay. Even if you get that com complicated Indian name wrong, <laughs> just write to yeah. anyone at inclusiveplanet.com. <laughs> well, we can, and we'll put <laughs> it in the there. show notes if you go to breadtv.com, yeah. B-R-E-D-T-V.com, yeah. breadtv.com, yeah. and just look in the show notes, and there'll be a link to it yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, that's great, so yeah. they can contact you, or you can contact us, and we'll forward the message on, whatever, yeah, whatever's easy. I wanted to ask you, um, when you say, like, content and, like, honey for the bees, <laughs> um, like, what is it that attracts um, the members the members that like is there three things that you can say off the top of your head sure. that everyone just you know clamors for that's that's so um, I think uh, you know that would vary in different parts of the world uh, for instance if you look at India India has a lack of even basic accessible content like even things like uh, books and articles uh, you know which are important for school important for college you know, there's a lack of even that stuff. So education. Yeah, ed educational material is therefore extremely important. Uh, but, you know, all forms of uh, even stuff to do with travel. And I think one thing that pretty much attracts everyone is relationships. Uh, mm -hmm. I think people want to connect with each other and share their experiences about relationships. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. For them, it's such a unique experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
so I think that's something that we've seen is, is a, a, a but do you but it's easy to club this into category simplified categories it, it actually yeah. a wide variety content is such a gateway right good gateway your, to everything your right? question is kind of like asking yeah, it's a lot what, of things what, mm-hmm. name three good reasons why I should use the internet yeah. no, oh my gosh like, you can't you even could, begin in three right but it's like it's like it's it's the gateway for the internet yeah to the to the print impaired so it's 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 your facebook it's your yeah. connection it's your google it's your yeah. your access to all the the you know how much reading we do online you know it's their access to all the reading all the content whether it's academic mm-hmm. or social or fun or just comedy or anything mm-hmm. the, the, Absolutely. whatever your interests, whatever whatever your interests interest, are so, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, i just thought maybe there was some no, a driving there, there force is, there behind there is one little thing which i think ed uh, which uh, you know you brought to light which is important which is that in different parts of the world the, the proportion varies for instance in india because there's a lack of basic content people want to connect and even share basic content but in the us where there are a lot of orga- lot of organizations that provide basic academic content learning content people want to share stuff that is maybe beyond that so beyond it's not that. so fundamental it's social stuff it's it's you know mm-hmm. it's just fun and, and, and it's leisure but but in in india it could be not just leisure but really high utility uh, because mm-hmm. that's what you don't so there's, that, there's one internet so propor- in India they're mm-hmm. able to access the same academic content from here they, they but are. unless it's like local uh, no they, they are able they are able to access the only thing is that the needs are uh, needs are varied so therefore if we come if, if we are in the US I think that the value of inclusive planet or what inclusive planet means might be very slightly Overall. I think the community yeah. aspect might be more important than the sharing of content necessarily mm-hmm. I see what you're um, saying yeah. um, as far as the importance know, yeah. yeah also US users are more sophisticated in understanding the value of community mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so I think that again we're not experts we're far yeah. from experts we're not mm-hmm. we, we, are, we, are, we are experimenting and figuring things out so if anyone you know mm-hmm disagrees for good reasons I, I, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd want to be a student yeah. you know but it's different things to different people it's basically different, that's the bottom line it's, I can it's, understand it's relationships because yeah. that's a yeah. you know a lot of maybe some of these people are ostracized for whatever reason right. or right. they live out in rural right. areas right. and they have but no form of communication I like think that. the best answer is what do you use the internet for yeah. you know you use it for communication you use it for making connections with people you, learn, you use it for research and for uh, learning education you use it for shopping use mm-hmm. it for I mean anything everything you use the internet for that's what this can be for because it's not only the it's like the Facebook and all that the connection social network but it's also mm-hmm. the links to whatever whatever it is mm-hmm. you want to do here's an accessible way to do yeah. it yeah. oh I found a great way to find this or that or whatever and, and get right to the accessible mm-hmm. meat of the content exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, I know um, like several years ago there was this movie called The Secret I don't know if you've ever heard the, of it the, I've heard of the book Rod yeah. number one. and I started a blog a Spanish speaking blog and it was amazing to me because it was the opposite. I mean, people loved the movie, but they they really wanted the script because mm-hmm. the, they wanted the to read it yeah. while they're listening to it. And it's so yeah. important to unite all those things yeah, exactly. together, right. so I can understand where um, well, you know well. for for what you're doing, the opposite is true. Right. Obviously, absolutely, absolutely, uh, it's a good example. Well, let me ask you why. So it's it's it started in India and the mm-hmm. server it's mm-hmm. all set up in India. Mm-hmm. Um, the whose idea was it in the first place? Right. So uh, again, you know, before I answer this question, I think it's important to repeat what I said in the beginning, which is that I think we fundamentally believe that uh, w- the world gets trapped in these questions. Mm-hmm. You know, we uh, we have numerous organizations that say, you know, uh, what's the idea? Uh, what do you, you know I, and i feel it takes away from the constant evolution of a thought mm-hmm. and uh, I, I, so i want to put that out there mm-hmm. and this is to recognize the incredible contributions of the early members of this community and and, and the members of the team who joined later mm-hmm. i think it you can tend to and equally the ones people. who are about to join yeah, today yeah and yeah. and the idea may evolve dramatically right. but uh, right in the beginning uh, the, um, the origins of this idea that that they are three people who originally began to work on this and uh, my my co-founder a guy called Rahul who's in Geneva right now he's involved in policy discussions mm-hmm. uh, in, 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 in the area of the print impaired mm-hmm. and uh, he went to he came to the US uh, to work on the treaty for the blind and there he ca- he saw this shortage that was there and he came back to India with a thought that why don't print impaired people share more with each other rather than depending on 
uh, other people to provide them information and content mm-hmm. so when he came back he connected with uh, so i connected with rahul and another friend of ours and then we started working on this and then we refined the idea to understand what would it be to bring people together so i guess that was the origination mm-hmm. um and uh, since then it's been a bunch of very uh, you know kind of diverse group of people who come together and contributed and who are trying to shape uh, this into the right and this could and uh, it's in the early stages so it's very possible that there are more people who come up and contribute to something so what inclusive planet comes to mean in the us could be like i said a different concept right. as compared to but th- these are the origins of the idea. when i'm we totally believe that when there's a when there's an idea that's uh, that's like we call it a divine idea or divinely inspired divine, idea or something yeah. it's a, it's it's the idea itself that has the life exactly. it the universe conspires for it to succeed so it's just like a magnet everything is attracted to it and you just yeah. suddenly overwhelmed by the support yeah. that comes out of the woodwork everybody's helping be, if the universe can send some funding our way it would be fantastic <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the, and it can it absolutely can <laughs> and it will um the so now you is anyone in your family um print impaired uh, no uh, there's no one in my family who's print impaired i've had uh, you know experience uh, with disability in my family mm-hmm. uh, so um one awareness was that when people get disabled their needs change and their their experience of the world changes and that presents an opportunity to look at design and technology as ways to address that different perspective mm-hmm. a different need requirement right mm-hmm. i mean that's mm-hmm. the beauty of diversity right? right diversity creates opportunity absolutely uh, and uh, so diversity creates pro- challenges as well because we can tend to focus on the most well known categories but we, and we ignore certain other categories mm-hmm. but if but today the beauty of technology is that you can apply it to a variety of different categories mm-hmm. at less cost mm-hmm. so uh, i think i was sensitized to this because of the fact that uh, i had experienced disability in my family mm-hmm. um but uh, and but as for the team uh, we have people who we know who are print impaired and and in fact a part of the team now is a group of the early members who are print impaired and so they you know for us it's they are the most important part is of the team is there a full time staff or yeah yes how, there is there is there many? is there is uh, right now uh, as we speak there are six full time members of the team and wow. one person who is uh, part time mm-hmm. and uh, uh, so they are they have been working on this project for over a year now we've been mm-hmm. three of us have been working on this for about two years mm-hmm. but a full time team has been working for more than a year now mm-hmm. that's and great. what is the i mean besides what you've already stated wh- what is their actual duties like what is their like one has individual right, duties right, for one yeah. specific goal or i, I think uh, you know uh, for uh, for instance uh, there's of course the development of the technology and the design of the platform but excluding that there is also nurturing the community understanding how, what they want how they interact mm-hmm. holding hands see this is an early early phase right when you build a community there's a tremendous seeding phase that is critical mm-hmm. which you can't just ha- say hand you can't go hands off and say people are going to meet people and stuff's going to happen right. this is a concept that has to be encouraged has to be nurtured has Baby'd. to be has right. to be and that is a critical phase we're in right now so where we really and it might happen that after a few months we can be more hands off but at this phase we need lots of people to be hands on contributing content working with the community interacting engaging telling mm-hmm. people this is the critical phase most communities fail to take off because there's not adequate seed attention mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if i if i have uh like you were saying i have my own little treasure trove of uh accessible content mm-hmm. or you know methodology mm-hmm. that i use to to mm-hmm. reach this amazing uh op- open accessible content mm-hmm. how can how do i contribute it once i join mm-hmm. inclusiveplanet.com mm-hmm. how do i contribute that right so uh you know um what content you can share it depends on also where you're located right because there are you have to look at what the laws of that country are and mm-hmm. for instance in the US there could be uh, the applicable copyright laws that prevent you from sharing and and accessing certain types of stuff mm-hmm. which is of course uh, it's it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit of, it's a, country, country. country by country and of course we have uh, print impaired people who look at us and say you know my law prevents me from doing this but i don't have this content so i need to get it mm-hmm. so it's a, a need over anything else kind of discussion there's like the, there's the law <laughs> law and then there's the moral law <laughs> there's the yeah, mm-hmm. the moral yeah. law is yeah. the, come on look, pro- pro- i can read a book if i hand it to you you can read the book yeah so so it's that the is, same book. but it's a delicate issue because yeah. you know the the the, the copyright debate has 
has become such a powerful debate in in uh, especially this part of the world mm-hmm. that people can tend to see that issue even before they see the mm-hmm. fact they get a powerful solution yeah. it's a bit like saying you know i want to reach mars but somebody set a speed limit on crossing <laughs> the atmosphere yeah you know exactly um so you can't go to mars so <laughs> you can't go to mars no. you know? <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, again uh, but um, there are terms and conditions and people have mm-hmm. to exercise choices and we have to uh, do that because you know we want to respect the law mm-hmm. but we want we 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 want to give people the choice yeah. mm-hmm. so people exercise their choices but if you link to content that's hosted elsewhere then does that just take you off the hook then if you're uh, linking you know if you're linking to a site well then it's the no, site's no, own no, responsibility no. then if you if no. you that's called content discovery right you're helping mm-hmm. people yeah, discover like google that's fantastic right that's fantastic mm-hmm. yeah. there's nothing wrong mm-hmm. with that you right. know and uh, to, the best, to, to the, the best to the best of my knowledge to the, to the best of my knowledge there right. could be some uh, mm-hmm. section 2.0.56 point something which you know Shrilanka point law. death <laughs> but yeah. you know to yeah. the best of my knowledge but uh, uh, you know uh, at the end of the day people are the powerful powerful force of this world right, right. Mm-hmm. and uh, you know they'll find a way to get what they need they'll find a way to get what they need they'll find a way to empower other people right and um so but, but back to this so they can do they upload content directly to the site or do they just put links and no, lists they, no and people can upload content directly to the site oh okay so they share just the way what on youtube what forms of content it like could be it could be audio? A, a audio it could be a digital document like a, a doc file or a txt file mm-hmm. or any type of readable digital mm-hmm. document mm-hmm. it could be more specialized formats uh, so anything that is accessible and at the lowest end of accessibility is a simple text, text. document and the highest end is human voice mm-hmm. you know so just in terms of the range of accessibility right. and mm-hmm. then the uh, uh, so but as far as inclusive planet uploading content directly then they have to check off yes i this is creative commons shareable public domain i own the rights or something like that when they upload it directly they have to it's agree right at the beginning of uh, when they sign up there are terms and conditions that okay. say that please check with uh, you know don't um, upload stuff that's copyright no mm-hmm. in you know, your country it's <laughs> do here you, you take responsibility for that so right. that that mm-hmm. means that i think it's important to understand that um there's some people who could the people respond differently mm-hmm. but they should be informed they right. should know mm-hmm. uh, you know what they're doing right. and mm-hmm. i think that's uh, we leave it we give it to people and we take whatever precautions we we can on our own so somebody does mm-hmm. upload something that a publisher has a problem with um then we react by taking you. down take, Given, you know no, take uh, down notice take down policy, policy like policy like youtube like, like everything yes, else yes. in the world on the internet absolutely mm-hmm. let me uh, moving off away from copyright and all that ip yeah. stuff um that downer topic <laughs> for me um the uh what was the next question oh yeah there, uh, is is it possible for you to do uh grant applications and get grants from private you know foundations or from government entities in different government different different countries yes. Do you have anybody working on that? Uh you know uh, we don't and I think the challenge is again like I said we're a small team uh you know we're looking for collaborations and partnerships with people who can come in and co own the idea and get So the there's benefits. another volunteer opportunity. Yeah. If you know how to write grant uh, mm-hmm. what is it grant applications please help out. Please apply. <laughs> yeah. More than anything else join us. Join <laughs> us. Absolutely. And I, I keep saying this which is uh, everybody can join. Everybody can join us and I can be a co-founder. You could be a co-founder and and oh. you could and uh, this the idea of this project is a social venture which is ultimately we believe that this can be commercially viable because if we ha- are catering to the print and pay community across the world then anyone who wants to sell products, deliver services to the community will want to go through us. Mm-hmm. And so there's a commercial opportunity here and I think that again we are opening out that opportunity to anyone who wants to join in this platform sees a social commercial moral mm-hmm. uh, you know opportunity yeah. there you can come and so how will it be commercial will it will it uh, will it be advertising uh, s- yeah. sponsorships yeah. Yeah. advertising paid services down the line mm-hmm. uh, so you know you could look do you have it. any ads now so currently we don't cuz you know we haven't really changed that but yeah. but what we do do is we take the expertise which we have in developing accessible systems mm-hmm. because at the end of the day we are one of the few people designing an accessible web 2.0 platform mm-hmm. uh, and we take that and we offer that as a consulting service for people oh, okay. who are creating websites oh, oh, that's uh, good. saying that's that you know good. if you are creating a site that you want also to be accessible, accessible then the best people to he- help you out with that is us and um, we can mm-hmm. test your platform which we create on a community of thousands of people <laughs> from across the world so that's the best right. testing oh, environment absolutely. so that is something that we doing now and we're working with a couple of people making a little money on that so that's something we're doing trying to see how independent that can become if you see an opportunity in terms of collaborating with us on that or you want to you know help us with that uh 
we have been, all I can tell you is an extremely competent team of people mm-hmm. working on, on design mm-hmm. and technology. Well, so there's another another opportunity to help out is if you have a company, mm-hmm. if you have a company or a business that uh, you want to market your product or your service to the uh, print impaired community around 4, the whole people, world. 4,000 people, 75 countries and growing. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, can, you can contact them and, and be one of the first advertisers to place an ad and reach them. Now, are, there, are the, are the um, members of the community, are they going to be able to skip the ads or is it going to be like, kind of like, you're going to have to hear it if you go through this content? How I think that's that a good be? question. I think, I think we don't uh, even know yet. You know, we don't know as yet <laughs> and we're probably going to try and do something. So we definitely, whatever we do, I'm sure there'll be people who may not like it. Mm-hmm. But I think by and large, the community wants to support something that supports itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, That's and, true. And down the line, we'd want to hand this, you know, a, a large part of the ownership of the initiative to the community. And, I'm, and ownership is already with the community, but I mean even mm-hmm. technically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Taking shares of the enterprise and actually of the venture and saying... And financially, I think that they yeah. will... Uh, so from my uh, little uh, connection with the mm-hmm. uh, visually impaired community in Twitter, my impression is that they really, really want to be self-sustaining. They want it. They support companies, companies who are really pro accessibility. They really want to support, but they're also they really hold them uh, accountable. Like your accessibility has to be real accessibility, right. not just in right. name right. and get, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. then you yeah. actually it doesn't work. Yeah, mm-hmm. it has to actually work. Right. And then yeah. if it actually works and you're committed to the accessibility, it's not just talk, talk, talk right. like some companies. Then they really are loyal and they yeah. spread the word. Like then there's not no better advertising Absolutely. than word of mouth. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean that's really And you know I think uh, it's important to remember uh, in terms of our uh, commitment to the cause we're not creating something that's designed for the sighted and adapted or made accessible to the print impaired. We're designing for the the print impaired. So our platform is not even accessible in the conventional sense. It is designed for the print impaired. It's accessible by the sighted people. Yes, it's reverse. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But you know, the amazing part is something that's designed ground up for the print impaired usually ends up being accessible to sighted people because it follows... Uh, it's simple. So, yeah, it's simple. Yeah, uh, it's so not cluttered. It's not. That's cluttered. the problem. Yeah. You know, it's like the, so many of these. You know, Google and uh, like you can name so many, like MySpace and stuff. I'm not. Did I say Google? I meant to say like Facebook right, and right, and all right. those MySpace. Right. Can you imagine MySpace? Oh my God, <laughs> it's ju- I, it's just impossible to read even yeah. when you're sighted. Yeah. It's such a mess. The the fact that it's really really simple and clear. Yeah. Like I guess Twitter is probably the most popular example of something Twitter, very Twitter simple and, and uncluttered. Yeah. That it's just just text, 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 text. Yes. It's so easy, easy to organize. Now, in the on on uh, Inclusive Planet, are there are there um, sections? I because ha- I just joined and sure, I haven't sure. had a chance yeah. to explore yeah. it too much. But are there sections for like um, what we would traditionally call forums and um, like threaded conversations yeah, yeah. and uh, what else? Like, is it is it more like a social network like Facebook right. with friends and links and all that, right. or is it more like um, like a forum? So first, it's not a conventional social network like a Facebook. It's an open community in the sense that when you make a friend, you don't just see uh, the world of your friends. You see the entire uh, platform. So it's, it's a more like open. a it's more like a discu- uh, like one of the popular discussion board platforms, mm-hmm. but enabled with a lot more friend to friend, you know, uh, kind of sort of transactions and okay. stuff. Okay. Uh, but in terms of uh, are they f- threads and stuff? Absolutely, they're what you call channels on Inclusive Planet. Mm-hmm. So if you want to start something that uh, you where you want the discu- the conversations and the people and the content to be focused on a particular area, mm-hmm. you can start a channel. So people have started channels on a variety of stuff. There's a channel called uh, there's a channel called Love Actually on, on relationships where people share all mm-hmm. sorts of interesting stuff on relationships there's a channel on cooking there's a channel on education and computer science there's a so channel there, like in a, what we, we saw yeah. a discussion board what we call forums we would call the terminology would be a thread so it would be a thread well there would be a forum yeah. about bird watching or whatever and there would be sure. a thread about a certain you know the thread is a channel the thread is the, the equivalent thread is the channel. Is the channel. Okay, that yeah. was the terminology yeah, that threw yeah. me. When I went there, I'm like, okay, this is a channel. Uh, yeah. What's a channel? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know yeah, what a no, channel right. is. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, obviously, yeah. you catch yeah. on. Maybe we and need it, to do a little more education on that. No, I'm uh, sure yeah. it's fine because yeah. if, if I were visually impaired, I'm hearing it, then it is a channel. It makes sense. Yeah. It's yeah. a channel. Yeah. Yeah. But right. for, to, to someone sighted, yeah. Yeah. it's like, okay, what's a channel? You know? Because I'm not thinking. If I covered my eyes, I would get it. I would get it. But since we wanted to be equally appealing to the sighted, I think we'll have to look at some bridging. So mm-hmm. you know, yeah, the absolutely. challenge is one of retaining perspective on both sides. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. I wanted to find out, um, like, 
you have so many threads and channels and interests, uh, like how do you determine the social policies that mm -hmm. you're going to pursue mm -hmm. as far as um, enabling or helping the community itself mm -hmm. in a social or government mm -hmm. setting mm -hmm. and what you're doing with that? Sure. I think that the thing is we believe in people power. We believe that we are enablers and people will that people need just a few nudges to get them in the right direction. So once the community starts building, we don't try to moderate the platform at all. I mean, we're clearly hands off. We are a place where people to people connect and do stuff, right? So we hope that when, once uh, a larger group gathers, this group will itself use the platform to do other stuff, like, like policy change, you right. know, collaboration around that. And in fact, we had a very interesting situation of a South African association, the South African National Commission for the Blind, I think, pardon me if I'm a little wrong but they actually used our community to get feedback on something uh, uh, kind of a design for a braille voting uh, template that they had created so they used mm -hmm. and people from mm -hmm. all over the world gave them feedback and they were absolutely thrilled to get that That's feedback great. so it's a classic example of what collaboration can do and mm -hmm. what people can do um, so that's what's setting the precedence for like any kind of political or um, um, any kind social of change social absolutely change, right? absolutely I mean we believe that there's going to be 100 plus things that are going to happen once the community comes into play people are going to see that opportunity but we're trying to stay focused on the challenge of building the communities and problem with communities they can be language specific and region specific and nurturing each of these can be a challenge it's not so easy to sit there and just know that's why we need I think the term movement we need a wide variety of people to collaborate to help us build this and mm -hmm. conversely we need to then not be proprietal about it and open up right mm -hmm. so um, makes sense yeah. I have a question I just thought of <clears throat> as a as a sighted person who's into technology and I have um, you know I, I, I have websites and I have you know we're, a lot of us are you know techno weenies we, we're into all sorts of things now if I create a blog mm -hmm. let's just say a very simple thing mm -hmm. I create a blog mm -hmm. and I want it to be accessible mm -hmm. if I just go to wordpress.com and mm -hmm. create a free blog mm -hmm. is it going to be accessible do they have accessibility templates or they do yeah. they do they do so Does, do you have to select a special theme for that or can is every blog on wordpress.com uh, no accessible? I don't think every blog would be accessible every template would be, I think there would be select designs that uh, yeah, you know but you that. can but there's something else that you can do What's you can that? just plug your blog into inclusive planet that you can do that and then that all the content gets taken out and delivered in a completely it just strips way. it all out I mean you said what, it ports it like, like an RSS kind of porting how do, like a what like like R, like you have RSS Oh, RSS. You know, so similarly, you just oh, take... Oh, of course. Yeah, RSS. Like reader. Like reader. You know, Google wow. Reader. Oh, RSS so, makes so everything we become accessible. An ex, you know? Yeah, that's true. I never thought of how, do, how do you plug it into Inclusive Planet? Uh, there is... Uh, when, when you get onto Inclusive Planet and you kind of... You can... There is a tool that allows you to, you know, link. And if you have mm. trouble with using the tool, get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. We'll help you do it. There's you a tool to make... So you go to inclusiveplanet.com yeah. yeah. and you sign up and all that. And then what's the tool called? What do I look for? No, you just look for... You know, uh, when you get to post mm -hmm. and under your posting there's a tool that allows you to just kind of connect your blog or Im import the URL of your blog and then it gets the content is it there like is it now is it permanently available or is it just a one posting like in, in the channel no it's permanently available oh um, but like I said I mean, like a link like posting are, a link yeah people are not able to find it just mm -hmm. we can we can in one step we can connect it for you so oh. we can do the same either Ooh, now, what, what's the advantage in doing that versus just using the RSS feed? Because the RSS feed would be just text also, right? Um, yeah, you can... I'm Does it do something I, smarter no, than I RSS? No, so. I don't think so. It's about it's, the same. Yeah, it's about the same. And advantage of putting publishing your blog onto Inclusive Planet is it stays with you anyway, but it also reaches this much wider community which yeah, keeps building. Course. So, you know, you've got an ad. Mm -hmm. So, there are people. In fact, there are some people who are, who are print-impaired themselves who are publishing their blogs on sure. Laura, um, Laura Legendary who has... Uh, her legendary insights blog which is mm -hmm. really great she's mm -hmm. based in Washington uh, she um, you know her blogs on inclusive planet and so mm -hmm. we want so to that way you a can classic make example of getting more content which is useful yeah. content onto the so because so what you would what I would want to do is I would want to have it you know a really beautiful theme for the cited and then also include it in inclusive planet and then have the other link yeah. for the yeah. for so the you don't have a compromise the, yeah so you get the best of both best of both all mm -hmm. the content yeah. goes both yeah. ways yeah. Okay, because yeah, because otherwise it would just be cluttered on the yeah. most of those themes. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, 
what so would I use that tool or I use the RSS or I try both and see which one comes the out better? The tool actually uses RSS. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you just yeah. use that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Yeah. Very smart. Okay, cool. So you can so everybody who has a blog or a website, anything that you have an RSS feed for, go to inclusiveplanet.com yeah. and look for the tool yeah. Yeah. and import your blog onto inclusiveplanet.com yeah. and yeah. instantly get thousands more subscribers yeah. Yeah. who are reading your content. Yeah. yeah. And from multiple for, countries, they'll 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 probably the love world. it. Yeah. How, do you got, do you analyze the um, like currently what countries the yes, the um, audience is from? Uh, currently, uh, you know, of course, India because that's where we started off. Turkey mm -hmm. is we're available in English, Turkish, Arabic, um, and now oh. we're introducing Spanish. The reason is that it's the community itself which is translating. So they right. themselves have told us, give us the text strings of your platform. We will convert it into our language, and then you just deploy it, and you creates a new language version for them. Wow. Right? Yeah, so therefore you can do That blows it. my mind. So they can actually wow. go there and they can click Turkish and then all the content is all, automatically all, all, translated into Turkish? No, all, the site is in Turkish. The whole site. So, mm -hmm. But the content is a file. So that could right. be in Turkish or any language for that matter. It's a file. Okay. You know, it depends right. on their screen reader on their desktop, which is mm -hmm. going to read that out to them. So, mm -hmm. the, the, but they need the use interface to be um, access in, in their Simple. language as well. Mm -hmm, in, uh, mm -hmm. So therefore, we wanted it to be in Turkish because the Turkish community, the Arabic community itself is growing fast. Mm -hmm. um, Spanish is something we really want to work on. But, you know, you can never just put it into the language. You need early users to see it and to work with. You can't right. just say you're going to put it in the language. What are people, Spanish users going to come? Maybe he can use the interface, but doesn't find anyone else, doesn't find useful content, right. doesn't find a useful uh, community experience. So that's where the seeding yeah. becomes really critical. That is where the, yeah. the, the bow can break. You know? So here's what you can do. You can, if, you're, if your native language isn't English, then um, you can just send out that email or tweet and say, go to inclusiveplanet.com and tell them you yeah. want to join this community, start a yeah. channel yeah. and say you want to, you want to, uh, you want to be a, an early seeder for the Spanish language or whatever trans, Chinese you, language, whatever language you, can, you speak. You can dramatically change your world when yeah, it comes to print totally. prepared people by helping us with this initiative and, That's and, right. and uh, you know, join us, become a co-founder like you keep saying. That's you know? great. Yeah. Now are people uh, taking it like a step further beyond the cyber world? Like are they using it for true social like gatherings? Meetups. Conventions? Conventions, meetups, etc. I think that's that's our vision. I think it's a little early for that, but yeah. our vision is that one day Inclusive Planet members who've connected on Inclusive Planet can meet at a coffee shop in uh -huh. in a city where they are all from, and in that coffee shop, they they can get a preferred treatment. Yeah, I mean, well, just they imagine will. walking they in with an Inclusive Planet card or walking <laughs> in with and saying, "Hey, you know," and we get. 20% off here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the frugal yeah. shopper will yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> that's uh, that's yeah. just going to yeah. happen. We have, yeah. we have one. Just it, happens as, it just happens without even planning, planning it because yeah. people on Twitter are like, oh, I'm going to be yeah. in your city. Let's meet Let's for coffee. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have one deal where you know a friend of mine runs uh, Indian Raps, you know, like you have Lebanese Raps, Indian Raps joint in Soho in London. And uh, Raps as in the sandwich, not like, no, as rolls, in the music. Like rolls. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Indian rap. Indian rap. Nobody no, wants yeah. to listen to that. That's <laughs> a bestseller. <laughs> so fortunately, he went in the right business, the food business. Uh, uh, yes. But uh, so he has a rap joint in, in uh, Soho called Moolies, and he uh, basically Moolies is our first kind of partner. And you know, people from uh, England who go to London you can go to Moolies and get. You know, he'll, oh. he'll treat them specially. Oh, great. They can have their meetups at Moolies. So that's the long term. Just go back in and say, I'm a co founder of Inclusive yeah, Planet. Yeah. And you, and got, I want and my you can discount. get your lamb roll or whatever it is. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I want my discount. <laughs> we get a discount. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce and Ed. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ed gets a discount. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Well, this has been wonderful. Such a learning experience. And yeah. we have. A lot more to learn. We just the, this is the tip of the iceberg yeah. that we got from this, but yeah. it's fantastic to know how you can get involved and how you can help in all, so many ways. Your imagination obviously can run Absolutely. wild. Absolutely, and it's such a great, great thing that you're Service. doing for Thank the you. world. I mean, that's well, a great vision. You know, and it's not only for the print impaired; it's the whole planet. It is. That's why I love the name Inclusive Planet because mm -hmm. it actually is all mankind, all humankind, because we are losing out. All of us, sighted people, are losing out on the the minds and the brilliance, some mm -hmm. of the most brilliant artists and musicians and creative minds on this whole planet yeah. are print impaired. Yeah. And we're losing out on the connection with mm -hmm. them. And, the, and if, you, if we help them, uh, 
and help our help themselves to link them to the rest of the world through the power of the technology and the internet and the community there it we're just like boom we just added 20 percent to our brain absolutely. of the whole planet absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely well we just have a few minutes i wanted to ask you really quick uh what new technology is coming down the line that is real thrilling or exciting when yeah. it comes to all this i, I think uh, you know uh we've got 30 seconds yeah i think, I think <laughs> two things one is we are working on uh, creating mobile networks so not just inclusive planet to be accessed through uh, you know the you know, pc or but mm -hmm. also through uh, you know simple mobile phones we're looking at that gotcha. but there are a couple of technologies in the print impaired space you know including actual sight through different cognitive centers of the brain so that stuff's going to take time Mm. Okay. okay. All right. Great. Well, we're That's gonna have awesome. to. We're definitely gonna have to follow up. We can even when you're back in here, we can get you on Skype. We get you on Skype. Waiting for you guys. This. Thank Lovely. you so much, everyone. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for joining us and go to inclusiveplanet.com. Check it all out. Inclusiveplanet.com and of course Bread TV. We'll have all the notes on the show notes. B R E D T V dot com. Couldn't be easier. Spread the word. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you tomorrow.